Have you ever played Pingo? Yes, you've heard correctly. I mean Pingo, not Bingo. Pingo stands for Peer Instruction for Very Large Groups and it had originally been developed by the University of Paderborn. It's a quiz app that allows you to conduct live votes and so it doesn't have to do with Pingos at all, even though they are also quite nice. But of course, you may ask questions about Pingos. The app is not restricted to a particular content area. My name is Dr. Jennifer Schlur and today I'd like to show you how to create questions and conduct surveys with the help of the web application Pingo. First, you'll have to enter the following web address into your browser, pingo.coactum.de. Afterwards, you simply need to click on enter in order to load the page. This is what the Pingo website looks like. Next, you have to create your personal account. For this purpose, you have to click on Login, Register and enter your personal details. Your first name, your last name, the name of your university, as well as of your department. Moreover, you need to enter your email address as well as a password. Please create a safe password and keep it in mind. As soon as you've clicked on register, your personal account will be created. Afterwards, you can log in with your data, as you can see here. Now, in order to create a question, you have to click on survey planning, new question. You can choose one of the following question types, single choice, multiple choice, text response and numerical data. I'd like to illustrate the general procedure with the help of a multiple choice question. So I select multiple choice and then enter my question. Let's take the following example. Which of the following is not a feedback component according to Hattie and Timperley 2007? To organize all of your questions into clusters, it is always a good idea to enter some keywords about the general field the question belongs to. These are called tags in Pingo. So my first tag would be Hattie, another one feedback and maybe also feedback questions in order to be a little bit more precise. I can add as many tags as would be reasonable for my purposes. All of my tags will be available for future questions and surveys. For easier cross-reference, all tags can be found here and be selected for a question. As I've opted for a multiple choice question, I need to define some possible answer options. In order to enter the first answer option, I have to note down a possible response into the first text box. In this case, my first answer option would be feed forward. To create a second answer option, I have to click on add another answer option so that a new field appears. This time I write down feed up. I'll proceed for all further answer options in the same manner. So far I have entered two feedback components and that's why I still need a wrong one. Let's take feed us as a third option. Finally, I enter feedback not only because there are typically four answer options in multiple choice tasks, but also because there are three feedback components that Hattie and Timperley discuss in their paper. Feed up, feedback and feed forward. So feed us definitely is not a feedback component according to the authors. In order to identify this option as the correct response, I have to click on correct response next to the field feed us because it is not a feedback component according to Hattie and Timperley and so it's the correct answer to the multiple choice question. Now everything looks fine and so I finally have to click on create question in order to finish the procedure. I'll be immediately redirected to a list of all the questions I have created but so far it's only one question. By clicking on the question, I can see what this question is about. At this point, I can still revise my question by clicking on edit. Furthermore, I can add some comments if I like, for example, an explanation. Now, 
If you want to pose this question to others, you'll have to click on Conduct Survey and create a new session. First, you need to give a name to your session, for example, Test Session Feedback Skills. Besides, you should enter a description such as Test Session for demonstration purposes. And afterwards, you click on OK. Your survey session is still empty at this point, but you can already see the code that you have to distribute to your participants. Your students need this code in order to take part in the survey by entering it on the Pingo website. But before you can do that, you first of all have to fill your survey with questions. As we have already created a question, we can click on Start a question from the catalog of questions. And here it is. In order to insert this question, we simply have to click on the little arrow next to the question box. By doing so, we immediately start our survey. Here you can see that the countdown has already started and there is no participant so far. The reason is that we still need to distribute the session code to our participants. That's why we have to stop the survey for now and give our participants time in order to enter the code into the web browser. As soon as every participant has loaded the page, there is only one thing we still need to do, which is restarting our survey. In order to do that, we select an appropriate time frame, for example, one minute, and then click on repeat. And so the countdown will start again and our participants have to quickly select an answer option. This is what our survey participants can see. A participant might know the correct answer and select the option Feed Us and submit the response by clicking on Vote. Time has already passed and we, as the survey creators, are still waiting for our participants to submit their responses. We can observe whether everybody has opened the Pingo site by looking at the number of persons that are indicated over here. But now time is up and Pingo will show us the results of the vote. For the multiple choice option that we have selected, it is a bar chart. For the other question types, it will differ, of course. For example, the text response option is quite fancy because it will show you a word cloud of all responses. In our case, only one person has submitted a response for demonstration purposes, but usually you'll get responses from most or all of your students in the classroom. You can also check whether everybody has submitted their responses by looking at the overall number of votes in relation to the number of students in your classroom. Now, in order to see whether this response was the correct one, we can click on Highlight Correct Ones. And indeed, this response was correct and therefore turns green and visible for everybody. We can repeat this procedure for further questions, for instance, by clicking on Create a new question or Add a new survey to this session. Alternatively, we can click on Survey Planning, New Question or Conduct a new survey by creating a new session or repeating or revising one of the previous surveys that we have already conducted. Thank you for watching and have fun with Pingo!